Fake game leaks are a pain in the ass, especially in the world of video game journalism because, for some strange reason, loads of people do this. Make a moderately convincing edit, take a picture of it on full screen on their monitor with their phone and anonymously post it on 4chan or the appropriate subreddit and go, hey look at this, and then post a load of bullshit information which though on occasion has actually been a real leak, there's a solid 95% chance, if not more, that it's complete horseshit. This has happened so many times in the past and will inevitably happen many times in the future, so I decided to make a video explaining how, at least through my experience, you can spot a fake leak, as they usually are dotted with red flags. The most recent example of a fake leak I've seen is Batman Arkham Court, which A, looks like utter shit, and B, makes me think about this. Obviously it's supposed to be referencing the Court of Owls and trying to hint towards that, however, the terrible title makes me think that they really didn't think it through as far as they thought. It makes me think about Batman being caught with Bruce Wayne stuck in prison playing basketball with a bunch of convicted pedos and that one man who cut up 15 women just to eat their tender flesh. I don't think anybody's arguing that this nonsense could be a real thing because it's about as ridiculous as Bloodborne Cart. Anyways, here are a few blatantly obvious signs that can help you identify a fake leak. In my mind, a simple post giving detail without any evidence or anything that could support them is not counted so much as a leak as a rumour. I'll go over how you can easily pick those apart too. So first of all, we've already glossed over the potato photo method, which is essentially using a full screen image of artwork with a clear title showing, often in a dark room, on a shaky phone that looks like utter shit. To be fair, some leaks in the past have come through this potato photo format, but more often than not, it's complete and utter nonsense. Anyone can Photoshop convincing looking artwork, render it to 1080p in a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, and then take a photograph of it on their monitor on full screen in a dark room and post it on 4chan already. It's not even that hard to do. In fact, some people go out of their way to make these points by making fake leaks and leaving a message in there saying anyone can make a fake leak because they can. You don't even need to be the one doing the artwork to pass something off as a leak when it's really not. You could just take someone else's inspired work, say if they're designing something as a tech test for example, and even shots from other more obscure games entirely. They can take that, take it out of context, use the potato photo method, nobody can backwards search it, and with your look at that you've got a very convincing forgery. One example of a franchise that gets fake leaks in the potato photo format a lot is Assassin's Creed. If you look into the history of fake Assassin's Creed leaks, you really do realise that anyone, and I mean anyone, could fake this stuff. In potentially fake artwork, look for inconsistencies in textures or Photoshop errors, and also look for reused assets such as the ones shown here which are clearly from Black Flag and yet it still managed to trip so many people up because they didn't think about it. Errors, for example, likely would not be made by official artists since they probably double, triple, and quadruple check their various drafts of work. This would lead them to a spotless finish, whereas a fake leaker likely spends an hour in Photoshop at a maximum and then renders it out once and doesn't iron out any errors or inconsistencies. This way you can see the inconsistencies in the art, which makes it look simply wrong. If art looks bad, it's probably because it's fake. Next, it's important to think about who's posting it. If you check 4chan, the user posting may remain anonymous. Ugh, I just had a stroke. The user posting may wish to remain anonymous, which though a genuine leaker would probably do the exact same, I think it's suffice to say that foregoing any form of identification makes you less trustworthy than you already aren't. On sites like Reddit where you need an account, check when the account was made. Chances are with fake leakers, they create an account just to post their bullshit and never use it again. If the user doesn't engage anything else other than the post regarding their supposed leak, then there's a good chance that they've created the account just to fuck with you. If it is a genuine leak, there's a good chance that the leaker will post what they need to post and then never engage that post again. Whereas with someone who's faking it, chances are they're after attention, so if you give it to them, they will more than happily engage you. So the more questions you ask, the more likely a fake leaker is to trip up and say something that directly contradicts details given beforehand. Why? Because it's all off the top of their head. They usually make the details up as they go along because it's not really an intricate plot. Nine times out of ten, they're just doing it for a giggle. The details left with a fake leak are often what trips it up the most. This can also apply to rumours, so it's worth making note. Too much detail. If a post has a ton of detail and it sounds far too good to be true, there's a good chance that it's because it's not. Fabricated rumours will often state what the faker thinks the majority wants to hear, because that's the surest way to get people to talk about it. This can be extra confusing because more often than not, these kinds of details are built off the back of other leaks in the past that are backed up by evidence. So typically the more details yielded, the more likely it is to be bollocks. Exceptions are made, however, including one such example being for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 
which gave away detailed information about the game, making this method not exactly foolproof, but bear it in your mind, those details sounded ridiculous and nobody believed it until it turned out to be proven true. So though there were a load of details in those rumours and they turned out to be true, those details were certainly not what the majority wanted to hear or read. My point here is detailed rumours being true in this day and age in video games is actually an outlier. If a rumour post is not backed up by evidence in any way whatsoever, then it's not really worth thinking about debating whether or not it's real or fake so why waste your time? It's fun to speculate and talk about what you think for sure and what you want for this supposed game that it's talking about, but the truth argument is redundant when you can't prove it either way. The only thing I can recommend is looking for details that seem outlandish or kind of ridiculous considering the franchise being spoken about, as well as any contradictions in the rumour or details that might contradict other more supported rumours. In my experience, most rumoured information that turned out to be true usually kept the details to a minimum and didn't really go into specifics about anything and are usually backed up by some form of evidence which is by no means reliable as they're often indistinguishable from fake leaks but the concept is the more there is to read the more likely it is to be nonsense. Another thing certainly worth talking about is the popularity of the franchise or developer in question. This is the only way fake leaks will gain any traction if it's something people actually want. For example, the Arkham Court fake wouldn't have been made had nobody been interested in the Arkham games and wanted more. Where you find a large fan base, you will often find a lot of gullible people. People make fake leaks to trick the majority, and success in doing this is definitely not unheard of. For example, I know the guy who made the fake Assassin's Creed adder leak, and it did have a lot of people fooled. But the only reason he made this was because he knows the Assassin's Creed fan base is so large, so making and posting this was guaranteed a reaction to some capacity. That's not to say people can't make fake leaks for something obscure, because they more than certainly can. It's just not as likely to happen. So as a general rule of thumb, when it comes to bigger games franchises, there's more likelihood that a leak could be fake. Franchises such as Assassin's Creed, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty or the Arkham games for example, there's more chance of somebody faking a leak there than say somebody fabricating a leak for a remake of Kingsley's Adventure. For those of you who played that game, you know that it fucking rocked. Sorry, I just tripped on a nostalgia tangent, so give me a sec. But that's not going to be prime bait for a fake leak, is it? So my point here is fake leaks tend to stick to what's sort of mainstream, or has a big audience at the very least. Also, on rare occasions, fake leaks can be really convincing, such as full-on footage or screenshots of supposed gameplay. It could be gameplay from a similar game that's really obscure, or it could be rendered as a personal project and a technology test by a fan of the franchise who's into game design, and then taken out of context, such as this Assassin's Creed-inspired Unreal Engine 4 tech test, which if it weren't for clarification you could barely tell was actually just made as a tech test and is nothing to do with Assassin's Creed at all. People could easily take this out of context and say that it's leaked Assassin's Creed footage or something like that. Or screenshots of this tech test which were actually posted on art station of somebody who's just a really big Assassin's Creed fan who's into game design, which was then used as supposed evidence of a fabricated Assassin's Creed Rome leak. And on a couple of occasions main menu renders have also been used in fake leaks as well. When it comes to these really convincing suspected fakes, you can always backwards image search to find out if the images have come from somewhere, or use apps like Shazam to find out what soundtrack is used in the background if one is present. Also look at who posted it, how it got there, and what business they would have acquiring that footage. Essentially never assume that something is real no matter how convincing it might be, because there's always a chance that it's not. The only way you're going to know for sure is through confirmation from the developer making the game. Finally, a big one here, check who's reporting it. Remember, a lot of video game journalist outlets such as Kotaku have inside sources that confirm information in times where leaks gain traction. So if these big quote-unquote reliable outlets aren't mentioning the leaks, then there's a chance it's because it doesn't fit with what they know and is probably false. I've always found Kotaku to be reliable on reporting on leaks and rumours, and don't really mention the fake ones. And the ones they do report on, in my experience, are always real. And that being said, even they could make a mistake, but if these reliable outlets aren't talking about it, it's likely because they think it's bullshit. That being said, they don't report on every leak ever, but usually someone's talking about it. And finally, remember, anybody can operate Photoshop or Serif, it's not a novelty skill, a lot of people know how to make convincing, unofficial game art. Therefore, anything unofficial could be fake. Fully rendered, convincing footage of supposed games have also been fabricated in the past as we've gone over, though this is not common, as most people who can do this have much better things to do than fake leaks. And if it is involved in a fake leak, then it's likely somebody else just taking their work out of context, which means that the actual footage that's being used is there on the internet to be found in its proper context. 
Also, never assume that somebody doesn't have the time to fake a leak. There are billions of people on Earth, and millions of whom will be following these big game franchises. There will always be a handful of people willing to go above and beyond to forge something and troll people. You don't have to understand the mindset of these people for them to be real. There will always be someone willing to fake something and go to peculiar lengths to validate it. Now, I've answered the question, how can you spot fake leaks from my experience? Well, I hope anyway. I know I'm very bad at this talking business. But as a bonus point, you're probably wondering how can you spot the real ones? Now, in most cases, there's no real way of telling a real leak from a horde of fake ones. The best thing to do when faced with supposed leak is to look into it. Does it make sense? Who posted it? Do any reliable sources back it up? A good outlet for posting on leaks is Kotaku, like I mentioned before. Whatever else they are and what other articles they post, when it comes to leaks, they do tend to know what they're talking about. Now, I wouldn't use the word reliable with leaks, but that being said, usually when leaks are most likely to be true, it's when merchandising and things trips them up pre-announcement at big expos like E3, and pre-announcement accidental listings on sites like Walmart and Amazon, which doesn't tend to give away very much. When it comes to rumours that might have truth about them, they tend to keep the details to a minimum, maybe giving you a code name or a title and a rough idea of what the game's about. Nothing fancy like you can do this in gameplay, you can do that in gameplay, though that too is not unheard of. In true rumoured information, details shouldn't contradict themselves or what makes sense, typically speaking, but rarely do real leaks come from potato photo methods such as these. In fact, they're not even fake leaks anymore, are they? These, these are just a running joke. So if you take nothing away from this video, at least walk away with the notion that potato photo leaks are to never be trusted. Another cool tip you can utilise to define real from fake leaks is to see how the developers and publishers respond to said leaks. For example, when Rage 2 got leaked by Walmart by accident, Bethesda sort of trolled them for it. A lot of companies do not actually comment on rumours or leaks at all because they feel like it takes away from the secrecy which is part of the fun when it comes to game announcements and things, if I'm honest. But if they do, it's important to see what that response is. As though on occasion companies have commented on real leaks, they've never in my experience commented on the fake ones. In the end of the day, the only true 100% confirmation you're ever going to get on leaks and rumours are from announcements from developers and the publishers alone. Until then, come to your own conclusions by making your own judgments and doing your own research for sure, but just be wary that in a lot of franchises, fake leaks are more common than real ones. So don't trust Roger from Kent, whose uncle works at Rockstar, spewing shit about Grand Theft Auto 6, because that lack of creed makes it more than likely just nonsense. Anyways, I've been rambling on far too much now. Hopefully this video has been helpful in some capacity at the very least. I'm sorry about the length of it, that wasn't by design, but you know what, these videos tend to have a lot of talking in them, so fair enough. Please do remember that though there are a lot of fake leaks getting about, real leaks in the gaming industry are not by any means uncommon. In fact, they're very common. It's usually in the speculation period between the release of one game and the announcement of the next one in a franchise that's well known and popular, where you get all these bullshit rumours and false leaks entirely. So thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, I'd really appreciate it, and maybe if you want to consider becoming a patron to get all this extra content, then that would be super appreciated as well. That includes access to a drafted script of this video and hopefully more in the future, and from $1 a month I think it's a pretty good bargain for what you get. That being said, please don't feel forced to, but I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.